Welcome to a new video, today we're going to create a set extension for a drone shot. We're going to turn this original scene into something like that. Last week we made a set extension for a normal shot, if you want to call it that way. So if you want to watch that as well, be sure to stay until the end where it's linked. Or you can click right up here to open it in a second tab so you can watch this video first. So this is the original drone shot that we are going to use for this matte painting. It's this weird acre I found while shooting my post-apocalyptic short film Virus during quarantine last year in 2020. If you haven't watched it already, it's linked up here and also in the end. I wanted to make it seem so that I'm walking on this huge stone field that expands like hundreds of miles in every direction for my end of the world scenario. So in this first shot the camera just follows me and you can see some blurry stones in the background. Then we have this shot from the set extension tutorial from last week where there are even more stones and then we have this kind of big reveal in the drone shot that there are first just stones everywhere in the medium shot and then the big wide shot with the digital set extension. So while shooting I made sure that the drone is pretty much locked off. The day we shot it was almost no wind which was pretty good and I also put the drone in tripod mode to make it really stable in the air. But since the drone will move just a little bit anyways, we have to track the footage. So first we load our clip into After Effects and trim the clip to our desired needs. I adjusted the rotation of my clip a little bit because I wanted to straighten these tractor lines a little bit. Of course now the clip doesn't fit the entire screen anymore, but that doesn't matter because of course it's surrounded by grass anyways and we are going to remove it for the set extension, which means we can also cover these black areas to make it seem like an even bigger field. Theoretically we could even shrink the original clip to like 10% and build a digital matte painting around that if that's what you want. The possibilities are endless with these set extensions or matte paintings. So after my clip was straightened the way I wanted, I created a null object for the tracking which I renamed to tracker just for a better overview. Again sorry my After Effects is in English by the time I recorded the screen recording. Last year when I made this short film my channel was still in German. Now I'm making English video so that's that. I'm mentioning every term that's in German on screen in English. If you're still confused there's a translation script link down in the description with every term from German to English or the other way around. The following tutorials that are not from this time period will of course all be in English even on screen in After Effects so don't worry about that you will be able to understand everything. Also the short film is in English as well so you will understand it. Now for the tracking we go to the beginning of the composition and click on animation and follow movement. Then the clip will be back in the original position but just in the tracking window it will go back to my rotation adjustments after the tracking. Now we take the first tracking point and set it to an area of high contrast. This is very important important for tracking. In my case the stone field provided a lot of high contrast black and white spots so I just picked one. Then I opened up the tracking window to give the tracking a bit more information on where to stick to and then decided to move the first tracking point to this white stone on the grass field next to the road. And on the right side I enabled the rotation next to position. You could also enable the scaling but since my shot was mostly locked off I didn't do that. Then I moved the second tracking point also outside of the field into the other grass side of the image. I don't know why it was almost a year ago but I guess I was worried that there are too many stones in the field and the track would jump around or something like that. Then I clicked on edit target and set it to the null object that we call tracker. And then I just started the analyzing process and tracked forwards. Again, make sure that the starting point is on the beginning of the composition. Then I'm just speeding up this tracking process now. This took about 10 minutes. The bigger you will make your tracking windows, the longer the tracking will take, but the better the end result will be. I just stopped the tracking in the middle of the composition because I decided I walked enough of a distance to use in a short film and so I didn't waste more time than I needed waiting for the tracking because I would have just cut it out of the film anyways. So after trimming the clip and the null object and adjusting the work area corresponding to it, now comes the real part of doing the set extension. Of course you can use digital assets and stock footage to build out your scene, again if you want to know how to do that, watch last week's video, but for this shot I'm going to use what's already in the shot, I'll just duplicate it and rotate it to match the perspective. So I duplicate the drone shot and skip to the part where I'm or where the character is not in the area we want to use. Then we make a right click on the clip, go to time and make a freeze frame. Then we adjust the clip so that it fits our entire sequence. Next we create a rough mask around it and drag it to the spot where we want it to be. I just adjusted the size and the rotation a little bit and put it over the edge of the grass. Yes, I know I can see my masked out second shadow as well, I'll take care of that in a second. Then we feather the mask and parent the freeze frame set extension to our tracking null object so that it follows the motion of the original clip and does not stay in the same place while the original shot is wiggling around due to maybe some wind or something. This way everything stays in its place. Then I duplicated the layer a second time which was when I realized that just rotating it around wasn't gonna do it so I turned the layer into a 3D layer by turning it on for the composition in general and the layer itself. You have to turn it on for both 
that's important. If you can just see the blending modes and not the little boxes to turn off and on 3D, there's a toggle switch down here, which at some point drove every After Effects user crazy. I mean, it drove me crazy at some point, and I heard this from a lot of visual effects artists. Everyone has gone through not finding it, I think. This is not just me, am I right? So with 3D enabled, I tipped it over backwards to match the perspective of the vanishing point, so that it's not just turned to match the vanishing point, but also tipped over backwards to make it seem like it goes back at a distance. Here I noticed the shadow, thank god, and fixed that, and now again as always, I can tell you what to do for your scene, or which exact settings to the job. I can just give you the tools and you have to use them, because it's of course different for every scene. It's just trial and error until you get it right, maybe you don't have a stone field, maybe you can't track a white stone in the grass field, maybe you have to track a part car maybe you don't have straight track lines to duplicate but just patches of grass and that's fine maybe your drone was not aimed at a 70 degree angle but straight down on a 90 degree angle or just 20 I don't know I guess you have to figure it out for your own exact scene but I think no I'm sure with this technique you can build yourself a really cool set extension for your scene also one pro tip if you're extending for example stone or grass or dirt don't use the same freeze frame sample over and over because you can tell that it's just copied and pasted also I told you how you can get away with that sometimes in the last episode. So again be sure to watch that if you haven't already. In my scene I could use it more often because these tractor lines were a repeating pattern so the originals looked already kind of similar and I changed the perspective so that also hit the fact that they were just duplicated. But for the other side, for the right side, I didn't use the same sample. I created a new freeze frame not just to have a wider variety of patterns but why? Can you tell? You're right, I guess. The left side is in bright sunlight, well, sunset sunlight, and the right side is covered in shadows, so you can't just have random shadows on the stones and then a well-lit scene right next to it without anything that makes the shadows. We have to continue the shadows to hide the fact that it's digitally extended. So for the bottom right corner, I just used some more tracks to extend it even more, and I filled in the rest with this stone section without any tracks of a tractor. Oh, and I also did that for the upper section where something needed to be filled in. And that is already it, that is my approach to a set extension to a matte painting for a drone shot. I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing for more filmmaking content just like this video. Here you can see last week's video with the other set extension and here you can watch the final short film this scene is from if you haven't watched it already. Or again, even if you have watched it already, I won't stop you to watch it twice. Anyways, until next time, goodbye.